from Hot Tub University. So uh, anyway, here we are. We're number four, I think, or five in this series of uh, Sunday uh, afternoon webinars. And here we are in sunny Halifax, uh, where we're finally above zero. And it might stay there for a day or two. Uh, it's not that bad, really. But we're in lockdown here again. COVID's kind of reared its ugly head. So everybody's like locked into their little house bubbles now. So we're all going a little bit insane. So even though it's not been terrible weather, everything feels like it's terrible today. So for all you people out there suffering along with us, I know it's all a global thing. It's not just me, but I am just feeling a little battered today. It is what it is. So anyways, we're going to talk about parts today on your hot tub. And uh, you know what, guys? This is probably one of the most important things. I know I say that all the time, but there's really about four key things. Four, count them, four key things <laughs> when we talk about hot tubs. And what's really going to make a difference in parts is definitely one of the really big ones. So right out of the gate, there are two groups out here. There are what we call OEM parts. Now, that's original equipment manufactured parts. So that means there's guys that specialize in just building parts for hot tubs. So we've got guys like Waterways and Balboa and CMP. And there's lots of guys in the North American market that have been building parts, you know, for a long time uh, for hot tubs. And one of the things we like about OEM parts is they're interchangeable between, you know, between most of the brands. So lots of times, yeah, a guy will have his little, you know, sticker on his top side that'll be slightly different or, you know, small pieces like that. But things like heaters and pumps and all this kind of stuff, we can just buy on the open market. Now that gives you as a consumer the power to A, right to repair, you know, you own it, you should be able to fix it if you want to. And even if you don't want to fix it, and you want a service tech to come in, it really broadens that group of people that are uh, willing to work on your hot tub. Because one of the things you will find is when we get into the nasty side of the parts scheme, which is proprietary parts, a lot of people won't work on those units. And they won't work on them for a number of reasons. One, they're goofy, and they're goofy intentional to keep, you know, keep you kind of locked into their little their little um, their little little game there but also um because it's hard to source the parts so you end up looking you know if you're a service company and oh you're keeping delaying your customer because you can't get the parts um you know you look like an idiot and a lot of times that's because of the proprietary part and it's been controlled by the manufacturer of that particular brand of hot tub so proprietary parts is the, the second one so when we look at oem parts um we're looking at balboa heating and control systems and we're looking at cmp compression fit jetting and waterways uh, you know and these are the what you want on your hot tub proprietary parts is the others the other dark underbelly of the world and i'm a real really big against proprietary parts and here's why proprietary parts were all about some bean counter looking at this and going hey man we uh, could really make a lot more money in our business if we could control the end user the end user's ability to get parts so what we do is we go and we get a special part made to just fit our hot tub. And although we'll tell you, oh, this we do this because we're such a big, fancy company. We like to do it better than everybody else. So we make this wonderful proprietary part that you can't get anywhere but through us. And oh, my God, your tubs can be so nice. Bullshit. Proprietary parts is all about owning you. It's all about reducing your ability to competitively buy those parts after aftermarket. And by the way, you want an example of this? You think this is a little bit of conspiracy theory? Wheatley's going nuts. He thinks they're taking over the world. Look at your appliance industry. Do you remember back in the day when you uh, were a kid and your mom and dad had a washer and dryer and you probably never saw a different washer and dryer your whole life? Because washers and dryers will last for 20 years. They used to last for 20 years. I don't think my mom ever changed that god awful, ugly, yellow colored washer dryer she had on, filter queen or whatever the hell it was. Why? Because it was easily sourced parts. So, you know, when the thing did break, a guy would pull into your driver, he'd have the part on board, he'd be able to fix it quick and efficiently, it wouldn't be expensive, and it would be reliable, it would last. Then some guy in the appliance industry went, hey, I got an idea, let's make parts that only fit our hot, our, 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 uh, our, our uh, washer and our dryer. And then what happened was, uh, you know, they sold you that unit, and they said, oh, it's a wonderful unit, new and improved. And then as soon as something failed, which it did really quickly, like usually in about five years, because planned obsolescence is what proprietary parts are really about. We build a part that we know is going to fail, so that we know that every time it fails, you got to come back to us so we can screw you for the price of it because you can't competitively price it anywhere else so your appliance guy shows up and he goes oh that washer <laughs> man you kidding me that board that's in that washer is like 600 bucks and ain't even worth worth buying just just replace the unit and that's why washers and dryers and dishwashers last five six years now and they fall apart and your appliance guy doesn't want to fix them and when he shows up uh, if he can even fix it uh, it's with a super expensive part that he usually has to order that's proprietary parts and it's happening in the hot tub industry some of the big offenders of proprietary parts 
Hot Springs, Caldera, all the same group, uh, Arctic Spas. Uh, there's a number of guys out there, but those are probably your biggest two guys that are out there doing it. And uh, it's something to watch out for. You do not want a tub full of proprietary parts because the whole idea of proprietary parts is just stopping you from having the freedom of shopping for those parts. So when you're looking for parts, um, yeah, stick with brands that are using good OEM parts and you're going to have a lot easier time uh, sourcing those parts down the road. There's not a whole lot of um, a whole lot more to the parts scheme. You know, within the various suppliers, when we evaluate tubs, we look at um, you know all kinds of things like the thickness of the plastic on fittings and the longevity of systems. But you know, just as a quick example, I know that we can get proprietary parts. Uh, you know, it, it, we had a hot springs we repaired for a customer and the heater assembly unit, um, which was still under warranty, but wasn't covered because it wasn't actually the heater that failed. It was the pressure sensor switch was integrated into the heater. So we had to buy the heater. I think by the time we were done, we charged the customer like five or 600 bucks for a heater, which was crazy. Um, and on an OEM system, uh, the heater is about 60 or $70 for the core and uh, you know, maybe, maybe 80 bucks to put it in. So it is a big difference. Like it's massive. Mm -hmm.